when we begin to, to think about Easter and we've just sung them uh, songs there about, you know, Jesus uh, wearing the victor's crown and that he'd overcome. And that, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, but what the wonderful thing is, is that it's not just Easter time, is it? But it's every time. That's the reality and the truth that we walk in every day. Uh, but how good it is at this time as we just begin to look at the scriptures again and just to begin to meditate on those things. And I would uh, kind of uh, encourage you or advise you, if possible, this week. I don't know if it's something that you do, uh, but if you're able just to get over a hold of some kind of uh, devotional for Holy Week, you know, where you can just each day uh, just begin to go over the scriptures and, and maybe walk uh, the walk through the Bible each day as, as we go towards the cross and towards the, re re um, the resurrection, that it will just renew uh, that truth in your heart and life. Because there's no greater truth than that, that Jesus Christ came and that he gave his life so willingly for each and every one of us, uh, that, he, that he died, that he was buried and that he rose again. And because of that, we can have uh, new New life too in him because of that we can have new life now uh, an abundant life a life that's full but a life that is forevermore as well uh, with Jesus uh, because the resurrected king uh, is resurrected is and you know we've sung some wonderful truth this morning haven't we and you know I'm a, a firm believer that what we what we sing you know when we sing in truth you know that we uh, get it into our heart and into our spirit especially if it's based upon uh, the Bible. You know, we don't just sing just to make a noise and to have a jolly up, but we, first of all, we sing and we praise Him. But, you know, we sing in truth. And I believe in declaring the truth as well. And as we've just sang this morning, you know, He wears the victor's crown. We have overcome, we have overcome. That's truth this morning. And sometimes we need to sing it to ourselves as, as well as sing it to the Lord. That, yes, this is truth. This is what the Bible says. This is who I am uh, in Him this morning. We have overcome because He overcome this morning. You know, we're not uh, we're paupers, but we're princes, you know, unto our God and priests and kings to him uh, because he's overcome and we've overcome. So, you know, we should be living the victorious life in Jesus' mighty name. Do you feel victorious this morning? Yes. Do you feel a victorious people? Yes. Well, praise God because we are victorious whether we feel it or not, but it's good uh, when we do uh, feel it. Well, this morning, as you know, uh, in the church calendar, it's Palm Sunday and it's uh, the start of Holy Week or Passion Week. And as we know, it starts with a procession of Jesus going to Jerusalem on a donkey. And we're just going to read a, an account of that from Luke chapter 19 this morning, just as we come to the Word of God. Luke chapter 19. And we'll read from verse 28. And it says, After telling the story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the town of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks why you are untying the colt, just say the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt just as Jesus had said, and sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, Why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout, and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. And he replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. And you know, for me, this is a wonderful kind of an event that's taking place that we've just read about. Here Jesus is at the height of his popularity, riding into to Jerusalem on a donkey. Great crowds have gathered. They're throwing down coats before him. Uh, they're waving the branches. They shouted, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. There's a real celebration. There's a real cheer as Jesus is coming in to Jerusalem. What a great time of celebration. But you know, you can't help but just read that passage and that account of those things that are taking place and not think to yourself, well, what went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong right here? Because we know 
that here on this Sunday, there's this great time of celebration and they're receiving him. And effectively what they're shouting, they're receiving him as Messiah, they're receiving him as king. But we know by the end of the week, before Friday comes, he would have been betrayed. He would have been deserted by those that were closest to him. We know he would have been wrongfully arrested. He would have faced trial and the greatest uh, miscarriage of justice that has ever taken place uh, in the history of the world. There, an innocent man uh, would be condemned to death. Uh, and Jesus would be tortured. He would brutally die upon a cross. And we think, what, what went wrong? These folks that were cheering him would soon be shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Surely something went wrong. Well, let me tell you this morning, from God's perspective, nothing went wrong. From God's perspective, it all played out exactly as he planned it, exactly as he knew he would. See, God's plan was for this to take place. And Jesus even told his disciples many times, very clearly, you know, I've come to die. And I'm going up to Jerusalem. And the reason that I'm going to Jerusalem is to suffer and to die. But you know, as close as they were to him, it wasn't that Jesus had it wrong, but they had it wrong. They had the wrong idea of what was going to take place. See, as Jesus is riding in with a donkey and the crowds are cheering and praising and all the rest of him, they're thinking that he's going in to take over Roman rule. They're thinking that he's going in as the Messiah to restore Israel back to uh, Israeli leadership because you know that they were under Roman occup occupation, that the Romans kind of ruled there. And they thought that Jesus was coming to overthrow Rome. And we know this because they were waving the palm trees and the palm trees was something that they did in 165 uh, BC where uh, Joseph Maccabees uh, came in and took over Syrian rule. And they were all, all waving and they waved the palm trees in celebration to that. So they think now that Jesus is coming to, to do that for them. But Jesus had come to overthrow a superpower, but it wasn't that power. And that's where they had it wrong. They had the wrong idea. See, Jesus didn't come to overthrow the power of Rome, but he came to overthrow the power of the devil. And he came to do it by dying uh, upon the cross. See, Jesus didn't have it wrong. The, nothing went wrong according to God's plan, but they had a, a wrong idea about what was going wrong. They, they misread it. They misinterpreted the things that were taking place. And I wondered this morning, is there anybody in here that's ever had the wrong idea in God? You know, maybe God's spoken. Maybe God said that he's going to do something. And in our minds, we get the wrong idea. We think that he's going to do it some way or, or this way or another way. Uh, but the truth is that God always does it his way. Yeah. And, you know, we need to be able to submit to that. Because, you know, whenever we think that God might do it a certain way, we're actually putting God in the box because we're limiting God to our ways. But the Bible says that his ways are above our ways, that his thoughts are not our thoughts. And actually, if we begin to, to you know, God, God might give us the call, uh, but, you know, his is the way. And it says the steps of a, a good man are, are ordered. Uh, you know, God knows, or a man knows the way that he should go uh, in his heart, but the Lord directs the footsteps. So it's being, being able to be open to God, not getting the wrong idea. Yeah, bit holding on to his word, but, but walking so closely with him. That's why the Bible says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. You know, maybe God's spoken to th things to you today and you think, well, God, why isn't this happening? Why is it happening this way? Because, you know, God may have spoken to you uh, and, and, you know, God will say, I want to get you to this place over here. And we think we know how he's going to do it. But it's not necessarily that way. Sometimes we can have the wrong idea. But let me tell you, he never has the wrong idea. He knows what's best for us. He knows the way that we should go. And in it all, that we should trust him. You know how these guys got it wrong. You know, even the disciples at the end of it uh, dispersed. But you know, God had something so much better, didn't he? Jesus didn't come just to bring peace in Israel, but he came to pre bring peace uh, into many generations. God had something better. He had a greater idea. And our God is the God that he's able to do abundantly and exceedingly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Maybe it's that God just wants you to, to open up your mind and lift, up, lift off some limitations this morning. The problem is, is when we get down to it, uh, if we're honest, we're control freaks at heart. You know, because we're selfish people, that's the way that we're made. And, and sometimes, you know, we can trust ourselves more than we can trust God. That's the way that we think and that we operate. But this morning that God would say, that's the wrong idea. You know, forget that. 
You know, lean not unto your own understanding, but trust him with all of your heart this morning. See, God has something for you. Maybe God has spoken to you, but trust him in it this morning. Just, just walk with him in it because you know that he's good. You know that he's faithful. You know that, it, that God is up to something good uh, in your life. So these guys, they had the wrong idea of the event that was taking place, but they also had the wrong timing as well. The timing was completely off because here they were, Jesus is coming in on a donkey and uh, some of them are saying, yeah, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, calling Jesus the son of David, they were effectively saying, here is the Messiah. The Messiah is coming in uh, to Jerusalem. And the thing was, they were right. <laughs> To a certain extent, the Messiah was coming in to Jerusalem, but not in the way that they expected him to come in. See, in Psalm 118, it says, lift up your heads, your ancient gates, for the King of glory is coming in. But he says it twice, lift up your heads, your ancient gates, lift up your heads or your gates. And the reason he says it twice is because it was prophesied that Jesus would come into Jerusalem twice. This was the first time, but the second time he'll come back at the second coming. But you know, the Jewish people, they, they missed the prophecies concerning Jesus coming the first time. Because there's two lines of prophecies, uh, kind of messianic prophecies, if you like, concerning Jesus. There's those that prophesy him as a suffering servant, and there's those that prophesy him as the conquering king. And the Jews somehow missed the suffering servant prophecies. They missed the Isaiah 53. They missed the Psalm 22s. They miss uh, Jesus uh, coming to lay down his life, coming as a suffering servant, to, not to be served, but to serve and give their life a ransom for many. But they see clearly and awaiting, as we are now, the prophecies of the conquering king, of Jesus coming back uh, and setting up uh, his, his kingdom. Uh, whose rule will have no end. So when they see Jesus coming in and they say, is, is, is the son of David, Hosanna, Hosanna, and all the rest of it, they're thinking those line of prophecies, but actually those things will happen at another time. So they got it right, Jesus was the Messiah, but the timing was completely off. They had the wrong timing. And I don't know about you folks, but I'm sure we've all had the wrong timing in God. <laughs> you know, one of the things I think that we struggle with the most as people uh, when God speaks, it's just getting the timing right of what he wants to do and when he wants to do it. Um, you, but let me tell you something this morning. You know, God sometimes is more interested with the journey than the destination. So God may speak and God may say, I want you to be in this place doing this thing at this time, you know, and, and, and we think it's straight away. God spoke. You know, I remember hearing of a, a young, young preacher that uh, went out with his dad to a Bible study, midweek Bible study, and whilst uh, the Bible study was going on, the speaker called him out and prophesied over him and said, young man, you're going to preach the gospel uh, around the world. Of course, this 11-year-old, he goes home all week, he sat by the letterbox <laughs> waiting for the invitations to come through his door. But he said it was another 10, 10 years before he even started to preach. It was another 10 years after that before he started preaching uh, around the world. So the prophecy was fulfilled. Uh, what God had said took place, but, but not in that time. It was like 20 years later for it to take place. And sometimes, you know, we can struggle with the timing of things. But let me tell you, it's in the in-between time uh, that God's more interested in sometimes. Because God's more interested in us than what he wants us to do. Did you know that? You know, God has a plan and a purpose for your life, but before that he cares about you. You know, he wants you more than what you can do for him. He wants you to be with him. He loves you and, uh, and he wants to work in you and he wants to change our lives from glory to glory. And very often, yes, he wants to take us somewhere, but on that journey, there's a process. There's things that he wants to work out in our lives. He wants to change us. He wants to shape us. He wants to prepare us and to be the per person he needs us to be in that place. And sometimes that means going through some tough things. And actually, it's in those tough things that actually we learn you know that God is faithful. It's in those tough things that we learn um, to be able to be compassionate and, and to empathize with people because actually sometimes God will put us in a place to minister to people um, that are hurting and broken but you know we can say uh, we know how you feel because we, we've been there and actually you know I, I, my God that loves me who is faithful to me you know he brought me through and because he brought me through I know he can bring you through and I'm going to help you bring you through too. So, you know, it's always on the journey uh, and, and, and in the in-between time uh, that God's at work. So if God's spoken to you and you're not seeing it happen, or you know that God wants you to be in a certain place, 
maybe at a certain time and you're not there yet, just trust him. Just keep walking with him. You know, he who has called you is faithful. You can be sure that he will work it out. He'll get you where you need to be, when you need to be there, and how you need to be. Uh, so just trust him this morning. See, the thing was, was they missed this in between time, the Jewish people, of what Jesus had came to do. Um, yes, it's going to be a great, great day uh, when Jesus comes back uh, and, and calls us to be with himself. But you know what was more important to God than that time when Jesus comes back to make the world right was the cross, that in between time. That meant the most to God because it was right there that God would reconcile the world back to himself. It's right there that God uh, would make a way of atonement for all those that would believe and call upon his name. And God loves people. See, God wants, when he comes back to set up his kingdom, he wants as many people in that kingdom with him as possible. Yeah, that's the destination. But on the way, in that in-between time, he was going to the cross. In that in-between time is the place at the center of the time. You know, everything revolves around that because it was there that God reconciled us sinful world, sinful men and women back to himself. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it was in the fullness of time that God sent his son, just at the right time. In other words, not a minute too early and not a minute too late. And sometimes we struggle with time, but God doesn't struggle with time, in the fullness of time. He knows when the right time is for us. So we just got to trust him, friends. If you're getting frustrated and thinking I'm not where I am or doing what I should be, when I should be or whatever. All I can say this morning is, is trust him. You know, we're so concerned with time. We want it now. We live in an in a age where everything's instant, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm more impatient than uh, anybody, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's that we do. We, we want to see results. We want things to happen and all the rest of it. Uh, but, you know, God, he's more interested in us than some of those things. That in the in-between time, it's walking with him, getting closer to him. And, you know, sometimes we might have the right idea, but just the wrong timing. But let me encourage you just to uh, trust him in that this morning. So they had the wrong idea, some of them. Some of them, they had the wrong timing. Uh, and finally, there were those amongst the crowd that had a wrong attitude as well. You know, Jesus is coming in. There's this great celebration. They're uh, praising and, and worshipping and the Pharisees turn around and say to, to Jesus, tell your disciples to shut up. Tell them to be quiet. Uh, they shouldn't be saying these things. And of course, Jesus said, well, if, if they were quiet, even the stones would cry out. And Jesus said that because he, he is worthy to be praised. He is the King of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And above all else, he is worthy of praise. And that means it doesn't matter how we're feeling. It doesn't matter what we're going through. Um, he's to be praised. You know, the Psalm 34 says, uh, bless the Lord at all times, at all times, and let his praise be continually on my lips. But you know something, these guys, <laughs> they just had the wrong attitude, uh, criticizing and, and complaining. And I want to say to you this morning, you know, it's okay at times that we get the, the, the wrong idea. It's okay. You know, we fall short uh, of God. It's okay sometimes that we get, get the wrong timing. I'm sure we all get the wrong timing at times. But, you know, it's not okay to have the wrong attitude. You know, you might get frustrated in the, in the wrong ideas. You might get frustrated in the wrong timing. But never, ever, ever get the wrong attitude. Never be criticizing. Never be complaining. Never be uh, out of frustration or, or whatever. You know, the Bible says that we should have a, a, a pure heart and a right spirit within us. Not a wrong attitude, but, but a right spirit. Even when we don't see God uh, doing the things that we thought he would do. Even when we're wondering, where's God in this? And, and what's taking him so long? Why am I not in the place at the right time? Even in that place, to have a right attitude uh, towards God. And a right attitude is an attitude of gratitude. Being thankful uh, for Jesus, because we know he that has called us is faithful. And, th and that he would lead us on. Uh, this morning so not to to have that that wrong attitude in anything you know out of our hearts having a pure heart and, and, and a right spirit you know the bible says that it's actually out of our heart that, that, that sin appears uh, what's in our hearts comes out of our mouth and, and it's those things that we need to guard this morning to have a have a right attitude uh, in every any situation to be christ-like you know so we need to be on guard of those things and especially more so when we see that uh, who were the guys that were complaining and criticizing? It was the religious folk. You know, the Pharisees, the re religious elite of the day, it was those that were getting in. And you know, we need to be on guard for that too, because you know, we are 
the, the religious folks, so to speak. You know, we're not religious because we have relationship with him, but we're those um, that, you know, confess Jesus to be Lord. So let, let not the wrong attitude be found in us. Let us not be criticizers or complainers, uh, but be Christ-like uh, to people and to the world. So this morning, as we think about the wrong idea, what went wrong, well, uh, according to God's plan, as we've already said, nothing went wrong. You know, sometimes we fall short of God and we get it wrong. But, you know, he's so good and he's so graceful that we can just come to him. Uh, and in a moment's notice, he'll put it right. You know, if we've got the wrong idea, we've only got to talk to him this morning. He's the good shepherd that loves to lead and to guide us. And he'll put us in the right place at the right time and reveal his way to us. You know, sometimes we think we've got to be over there. <laughs> you know, and this is, the, this is the route that we've got to take. But God very often says, no, I've got another route for you. I want you to swing by this way. I want you to meet this person. I want this to be shaped in your life. I want you to, to learn something from, from this position. And it's just learning to trust him in that. You know, it's that thing that if you want to know the will of God for your life and what he has for you, it's just walking so close to him that if he says move to the left, you move to the left. If he says move to the right, move to the right. And we've found that as, as we've planted the church. You know, some of the things that we've seen come to pass uh, have happened on the journey. You know, it's been on the journey. Yes, we have a, a long-term vision and a destination, but God's been good just leading us by green pastures and into different places and into different people. And, you know, as we walk with him, it's, it's an adventure. But it's not to, to, to box God in. It's not to, to want to control it ourselves. It's just to say, God, we trust you, you know, uh, wherever, you, wherever you want to take us and whatever you want to do. And same with the timing this morning. You know, those of you that might be impatient with time, like me, this scripture is not going to encourage you. <laughs> but it says uh, a thousand years is uh, like a day to God. <laughs> you know, we're concerned in time. He's not concerned in time, but he's, but he's concerned about you. And he'll get you where you need to be at the right time. You've just got to trust him. He's the good shepherd that gives his life to the sheep. And this morning, if, it, if there's a wrong attitude in any area of our life that, it, that has crept in, you know, God's so good. He doesn't want to see that in us because he wants what's best for us. But, you know, we can come to him this morning. If we say, God, you know, I've got a, a wrong attitude. Maybe I was wrong in this area. Maybe I was bad to hold on to this unforgiveness. Maybe it was bad to have this bitterness or to complain or to, to murmur or, or to whatever. God created me a new heart and renew a right spirit in me. And if we do that before God with an open heart, he'll do that in, in a second. You know, our God is so good and so gracious and so righteous that sometimes we fall short, sometimes we get it wrong. But our God is so gracious that if we come to him in repentance, in a heartbeat, in a moment, he's willing just to put it right and renew a right spirit within us. And let me say this morning, there's nothing uh, more beautiful than a right spirit, is there? You know, a beautiful spirit, someone that's in a nice uh, place with Jesus. You, you sense it, don't you? You know, you can sense a, a bad and a, and a critical and a negative spirit. And quite, quite of in a spiritual sense, it, you know, it leaves you a bit. But, you know, when you, when you, when you meet someone that, that's loving Jesus, that's walking with Jesus, that has a, a pure heart and a right spirit, it's refreshing and it's a blessing, isn't it? You know, the Bible says that we're to be the aroma of Christ to the world. And there's a spiritual sense of smell, if you like. And it's, you know, people out there have a spiritual sense of smell. And if we have the aroma of Christ to the world, you know, they should see him and sense him in us. But, you know, wherever there's a wrong attitude, you know, it brings a, it brings a little bit of a tenth of a, of a bad uh, fragrance. And, you know, we're all prone to it because we're all uh, human. We all fall short. You know, we all get it wrong at times. But God wants to make it right. And we can do that this morning. You know, as we come to him and say, God, if I've got the wrong idea about anything, if I'm, I'm struggling with wrong timing, or maybe I've got a wrong attitude, God, would you make it right this morning? And as I say, he would do that in a heartbeat. But the wonderful thing is we think that, or may think on first look at the triumphant entry, uh, that something went wrong because Jesus came in in all grandeur. There was this triumphant entry that would end in tragedy, but actually it was right. And actually he came uh, to put right what went wrong with humanity. And of course what went wrong was that we fell short, that sin entered into the world. Adam sinned in the garden and we carried sin since then. Uh, but each and every one of us uh, is guilty of that sin. For the Bible says we've all uh, sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you know, he came. Although we got it tragically wrong, although we messed up God's master plan, although we messed up the beauty of creation that he said that everything is good, 
Though we messed it up big time, we got it wrong big time, Jesus came uh, to make it right. And we know Good Friday, as he entered into Jerusalem on that Sunday, Ed, it, it, it wasn't deterred by the crowds. He didn't get carried away with the crowds, did he? You know, his mission was in his mind. It was set. Uh, there's a verse in Luke that says he set his face like flint to Jerusalem. He was going to the cross uh, because it meant our salvation in that place. No wonder we call Good Friday Good Friday. It wasn't good for Jesus. You know, it was, it was a, a tragedy in uh, human terms. Although for him, it was the will of God being totally fulfilled that mankind could be redeemed and be saved in him. And what a wonderful message that we have today. Yeah, we've all got it wrong. We've got it wrong in this place. People in the world have got it wrong. But in Jesus, as we come to him and put our faith and put our trust in him and in the full and finished work of Calvary, you know, it can be made right. And we can be back into a right relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's just pray. Uh, for a moment this morning and just allow the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. I want to ask Tanya if she would just like to come and uh, lead us in worship, please. And this has been something a little bit different this morning, in a sense. But you know, at times we know that if we're honest and open before God that we get things wrong. Maybe there's been wrong ideas, wrong timing, wrong attitudes. But God, this morning, we just want to come before you and humble ourselves before you and ask that you just help us in this place today. That you'd minister into our hearts and into our minds. That Lord, today, if we certainly have had a wrong attitude, towards another or about anything, whether we've been found to be criticising or complaining or uh, to be full of things that we should not be full of, then this morning, God, we'd ask that you'd just forgive us, that you'd renew our hearts, that you'd renew a right spirit within us, that, God, we would just be found righteous and holy uh, in your presence this morning for what you've done within our lives. But, God, we do thank you for that day in Jerusalem when you rode in. Because we know that on that day in Jerusalem, you knew exactly where you was going and why you was going there. And it was to the place of the cross. And Lord, this morning as we come before the cross again, we do so with thankful hearts, thanking you that right there in that place, Lord, you gave your life so freely for each and every one of us a people that got it wrong, got it wrong big time in, in our lives and at times still do get it wrong. But Lord, in that place, you were willing to lay down your life to make it right. And God, we just give you thanks this morning for the cross because we know that it was in that place that we were reconciled and that we were made right with you, put in a right standing with God, that we didn't deserve to, uh, but Lord, you had to because you loved us. And Lord, we thank you that there's salvation in that place for any that would repent and call upon your name this morning. And Lord, we want to pray this week as we, we go into this week, that Lord, we'd have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity just to share the good news message of Easter with people, uh, that Christ loves them, died for them, and rose again. So Lord, just help us this week. And help us where we fall short and, and we've got it wrong. And help us to walk right and to walk holy in obedience to you. But thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Hallelujah, hallelujah.